Hey team, so another weekend, another video uh, coming at you from the middle of Missouri, literally mid-Missouri. Uh, I'm traveling today from Jefferson City, Missouri over to a place called Bennett Springs, about 90 miles away. As the crow flies, uh, I wanna check it out. Uh, if you YouTube search for Bennett Springs State Park fishing, it's gonna be a lot of trout fishing. So I am going to uh, kind of play by the rules and try to do some trout fishing myself. So, yeah, I'll try to do some trout fishing, but I'm also bringing that bait caster that's giving me headache after headache and uh, getting it uh, rigged up. It's, it's, a, it's a me problem, not the real problem. Um, I guess i give an update. So, I, I removed all the 12 pound P line and I put 15 pound uh, Seaguar fluorocarbon. Uh, I put some loose uh, oil on there on a lot of like, you know, the, the components that touch, all the bearings and whatnot. And uh, I tightened everything back up. So the spool tensioner knob and the, the what do you call that? The magnets, right? So I, I tighten all that stuff back up and I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down and hopefully get it cast perfectly. Um, I've got some really good casts and then for whatever reason I get one, it was a bird nest to hell. So um, yeah, so I'm just trying to figure that out because uh, I think it's kind of cool to fish with a old school reel. I'm not sure if it was in the 90s um era or older or, or newer like I, I don't know but it's it's pretty cool it looks like an old reel and it, it it performs nicely so it's fun i've caught two bass on it so far on a couple of the outings uh but back to bennett springs it's about an hour and a half drive 90 miles on on the dash on the gps here and hopefully i'll be able to catch a rainbow trout uh and if i do catch a rainbow trout i might shift gears i might not but if i do shift gears I'm gonna switch over, try to catch a uh, smallmouth bass, which is what I assume is in there, uh, in the uh, over at Bennett Springs. I'm not sure if the largemouth are really gonna to be too interested in being in water that that's uh, that is that cold. So I'm on US 54 headed south, which is westbound um, 54, but it's really like cardinal direction south right now. And um, stay tuned, I'll pick up soon, and uh, we'll try to make a video happen. So. You know, you know how it goes. Yee -yee. All right, so yeah, just like clockwork, right? So post car wash, pre fishing, I always get uh, rainstorms coming through. It's, it's been one of the constants in my life. You can ask anyone I know because I've made the observation now for probably ten years, where it's like, hey, it's uh, hey, I wash my truck, man, sure shit. That same day or the next day it rains, and I, I, I just go through the tidal wave car wash and just drive through. It, uh, it's it's uh, really convenient, but I just go through there and get my truck washed, and sure shit, man, like the days after. It, it starts to rain or before I'm going fishing, it starts to rain. It's just one of those things that I've learned to live with. But anyways, I had to do a quick pit stop and pull over because my waders are, uh, they were in the back, they were in the, the bed of the truck and uh, kind of defeats the purpose to have waders that are wet inside. So the moment the rain started coming down, I turned on the, the next immediate side road, uh, jumped out, grabbed them, threw them in the back, back there. there you see them, that, uh, the, the camo and uh, got my ass back in the truck and setting out on the road still. So I'm about 21 miles slash 29 minutes away, arriving around 3.50 p.m. So let's see here, I'm gonna pass on an uphill, but uh, it's two lanes. Anywho, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to inform you guys that uh, the rain is one of those things that uh, kind of always, uh, doesn't plague me, but always plays a role in what I'm doing. And it's always, uh, you know, apparent, so. Back to driving. All right, so that seems to be the infamous spot that shows up on YouTube all the time. So I just passed the parking area. I'm gonna double back. Wait, hold on, there may be, oh no, it looks like it's closed, but under construction for some reason. But I'm gonna turn around like, I'm, oh God, I can't even think. Kind of excited. I'm gonna turn around, find somewhere to park, uh, cause this doesn't look like a parking spot. Looks like where the conservation officers go in a really nice restroom, really nice restroom. Well, at least the building. I'm not sure what it's like inside. But it would have been nice to have a second to go because I definitely pulled off on the side of the road and just peed outside of my truck at what looked to be like a volunteer firefighter station. So yeah, very excited, very amped. Not sure if you can tell, but yeah, this is uh, this is cool stuff. I got my fly gear. I can park right here real close by. I'll bring uh, my bait caster out and uh, my fly rod out and see what I can do. Oh man, that's really, really neat. I just really hope there's like no, uh, no fishing signs. We'll figure it out. Let's go. Yee -yee! 
there's a sign that says park closed because there's a managed hunt in progress. And I did see a bunch of hunters with their blaze orange on as I was coming in. But what the fuck, dude? This sucks. <sighs> Whatever. All right, so I'm gonna just walk down here to the edge of the of the river and uh, just kind of take a peek at it. I saw that across the road and downstream there's a parking lot and the last thing I want to do is trespass, right? The other one got here breaking any rules or, you know, upsetting anyone. It's just one of those things that I uh, I reckon no one would really care if I just kind of walk down here and peek, right? So, don't have any fishing gear, it's all in the truck. So, yeah, just kind of stop and observe and then go, uh, go back and maybe move across the bridge there to the opposite bank. I can actually see someone fishing in their wader, so like cool beans. This spot looks nice. It's a Hidden Valley Outfitters trading post and they're closed. So, you know, I don't know. Not really nice. But this looks really nice. Turn the camera around this This is a pretty little area. something just swam off so water's plenty clear cool beans yeah i'm gonna go, <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna go ahead and just go across the road and park over there um better safe than sorry right just i love fishing but i'm not, not really sure i want to break the freaking rules to do so at least not uh not not record it right and then upload it to youtube later to kind of have it held against me so yeah we're gonna move we're gonna be good good people today good stewards of uh of the sport and uh go down god i really really wish i could next i know i know if i try to find the number to that place it's gonna just ring and ring versus getting a hold of someone and be like hey you know it's me may i please you know xyz so we'll just uh we'll just move all right so here we are again got this bad boy we're gonna take a couple casts we're gonna bird's nest it real bad and i'm gonna just throw it on the bank and forget about it until i'm driving home and this this bad mama mama of jamma right here so we're gonna put it together and see if we can manage something but either way it's a uh, uh, the first Saturday in November of 2024, November 2nd, and uh, we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna kind of kind of manage here. So let's rig this bad boy up. Get it nice and bright, nice and tight. I'm really hoping to get a bramble trout. It's kind of the, kind of the, the targeted species, and uh, any any variety of bass would be cool on that uh, on that rapala, you know, cranking wrap or whatever it's called. It's not the clacking wrap. That's a discontinued lure. God, rapala, what the hell's wrong with you? I hope you're seeing this or someone from the the, the rapala company sees this when i say please bring back the um the twitching wrap because that was that was a fish catcher a bona fide certified fish catcher um i'm not sure what else the, the clacking wrap but the clacking wrap i learned uh this past week has been discontinued and that just sucks man because that was such a such a fish producer you know what the f and f sorry i get distracted easily i believe it's my adhd or my narcissism, right? Yeah, narcissism. That's the, one of those things, right? Anyways, um, yeah. I hope like hell I can get a fish for you guys and uh, record it so that uh, I can feel like I'm not here just doing this by myself. And I feel like I brought you guys with me. And not not gonna lie, I enjoy seeing my old fishing footage 
quite a bit. I normally save the videos onto my camera roll or whatever, but um, now I uh, just put my YouTube channel and watch them. I don't care, whatever, gets the views up. And I don't like to artificially inflate my views, but uh, I like to watch my old videos. They're kind of fun. I kind of get to relive the experience in doing so. Let's see here. So I'm going to sign off for a sec and then uh, get back to you guys here momentarily. All right, see, here we are. This is one of the parking areas on the, on the Niangua River. I'm not sure how to say it. Niangua, Niangua. Um, but yeah, not out, not far outside of Bennett Spring State Park. Probably still within the confines of Bennett Spring State Park. I'm not sure, so don't uh, don't take what I'm saying as uh, as being accurate. But let's see. All right, so this name Niangua, white ribbon. Okay, daily lemon trout. Brown trout, 15 inches or less, must be released. Gotcha. Okay. All right, fair enough. So, so I'm going to make my way down and start making casts. I'm just going to fish this little stretch. I might go up to the bridge, which is to the right here, but can't see it. But, um, yeah, see uh, what we can ma manage to get. All right, so it finally happened. Got me my first rainbow trout on fly. I had to switch to a minnow type. Oh, God middle type presentation but there he is it's a good long one so who knows i'll probably yeah i'll release it so here we go all right so unfortunately uh the fish hopped out of my hands because i don't have a net and i wasn't able to get um the release on on, on film for you guys but he's uh back there swimming free and uh swam off strongly so what i'm gonna do now is um i'm gonna, get a little, little, little. I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears because after a few more casts it just seems like the bite's turned off, and that's fine. I, I was able to, to accomplish. Oh man, you, you can hear him hopping. I hope. Oh, I hope that was captured. Oh, those were captured. Oh, they're everywhere. I don't know. Maybe a couple more casts, but I'm gonna. Uh, in a few moments, I'm gonna go ahead and put the fly rod up, and I'm gonna come back. Oh man, they are porpoising something fierce. Um, I'm gonna put the fly rod up, and then I'm going to uh, take the bait caster out a little bit upstream, where it's nice and quiet up there, and see if I can. A, manage to avoid the rat's nest or the bird's nest rather, and B, maybe get a bass. So that'd be pretty cool to come out here, um, get a trout like I did, which was a really good sized rainbow trout um, for my first one ever. And then uh, hopefully get a bass on the bait catcher. So stay tuned guys. Right, so that last bird's nest was crazy. I got it back in action. Um, I'm not sure if I really like this uh, seagull fluorocarbon. I love it for leader, 100% fluorocarbon leader. A Seaguar, the red label stuff, awesome. I love it. Um, almost zero stretch. It's nice and stiff the way I want my leader to be. Um, and it's super abrasion resistant. Um, this stuff here, I'm not against it, but that P-line, it was just more, uh, a little softer, a little more malleable, and it's still bird's nested like, like no one's business, but I, I don't know. I'm, I almost, I'm gonna keep trying lines. I'm, uh, I reckon I'm gonna go through a small fortune on different lines, but again, using this old school, um you know quantum it's a dc 401 sx something like that it's a classic express anyways it's an old school reel and it's fun to use and it's challenging right there you go ps 401 cx so it's like i said it's fun reel um it's fun to use it's old school as hell it's huge um it's not low profile at all but um to hell with it right it's uh having a good time regardless so We'll get back to it and the trout are surfacing. Holy shit. Bunch of tiny ones, but let me, let's see if we can get a big mama on the on this uh, lipless crankbait. All right, so after a few casts um, upstream, didn't turn up anything. Uh, the reel surprisingly didn't act up any longer. Um, after I turned the tensioner screw or the tension knob further than I would have anticipated, but um yeah pretty much gonna bring this session to a close i'm glad that you guys were uh here with me uh i, I certainly enjoy the company and uh let me see uh without further ado uh let you guys go tight lines and talk to you later yeah, yeah.